the biggest diva you were ever around is? Uh, I think I'll go back all the way back to early or my early career. Probably Joe Barry Carroll and I had the more most difficult distance between of how I thought the game of basketball was played and how he thought the game of basketball should be played and how it should be art organized. So, now he was uh, drafted by Golden State. Yes, the number one overall, and then yeah, that was the McHale trade. Yes, that made the Celtics really good. Yeah, the Celtics <laughs> did did quite well with you. And, and his nickname was Joe Barely. I think they Parrish. got Parrish and McHale. Yes, they did. Trade, right? Yeah, that Red Arbach seemed to uh, do quite well with that. Yeah. Um, anybody else on that that comes close to that? Uh, you know, his cousin's a diva. Cousins is, is better than people think he is. You know, he's difficult at times, but he's really, I think, in the end, is I, I think he's going to figure it out. But why does he get a bad rap here, George? Because it feels like there's always the Kings are always on the verge of trading to Marcus Cousins. I have no idea. You know that right now. I you know I did I he like you? Uh, that I you know I I don't really take a monitor of my guys how much they like me or how much they dislike. But me. do they play harder for you if they like you? I would probably say some, and then I say some have an individual pride. They're going to play at the level they want to play at. And then there are other guys you can motivate higher. Did so, Mello so. like you? Again, that monitor of like and dislike, I think went out of my coaching career 15, 20 years. So you ago. didn't care. What about respect? Did you care about respect? More? I, think, I think I, I think I cared about how the locker room respected the game and respected the team. And so I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that, yes. And, 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 and coach-player relationship, I'm, I'm a part of respecting them to make sure we all have a, a respectful attitude towards the game of basketball. How tough was it to coach him? Mello? Yeah. I don't think it was as tough as people think it is. You know, it, it, it was frustrating. And the frustration is, and I've said this many times, I said this when I was coaching him, that he could, be, he could get 10 assists a game, he could get 15 rebounds yes, a game. you're right. I think he could be a damn good defender, and and he's a great scorer. So he had all the whole pack. So you think this is a choice? Uh, you can blame it on you know as a coach. We never got those buttons pushed to where he would commit to being a triple double star. But rather. why wouldn't he see what LeBron is doing or Kobe's doing or some of these other players and say, I I, I need to be more like that? to be recognized as one of the great players. He's always going to be one of the great scorers in the game. Never one of the great players, one of the great scorers. Well, I think the thing that, uh, you know, the thing I think, my answer when you asked me that question was, my mind said, scoring is easy for him. And you, I think scoring in the NBA is the hardest thing to do. It's, it's really hard to score points against defenses that are tilted and defined to take you out. And I've seen him just, score 40 on a pretty good defensive team. And that skill is probably his comfort zone. And that's where he probably gravitates to, as we all gravitate to our comfort zones. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.